join Forum IS Academy, trusted by hundreds of toppers, including IS Rank 1 Shruti Sharma. Hello everyone, this is Forum IES and today is 17th April 2023 and these are all the articles that we are going to discuss today. Moving on to the first article, it talks about Army building Bailey bridges in Kaziranga to protect Rhino's domain. So this is the Bailey bridge. Um, Army will build these kind of Bailey bridges in the Kaziranga National Park and Tiger Reserve. So what this will lead to is that it will aid faster movement of forest guards. And moreover, this Kaziranga National Park is also a UN World Heritage Site. So these bridges, they will not be in the tourist tracks. They will not be in the tourist tracks and they will be built in the areas that would facilitate access to inaccessible areas that is um, earlier there used to be wooden bridges and they got washed away in the monsoon in those places to cross the small rivulets and streams in the national park these bailey bridges would be built okay so for better connectivity in primarily inaccessible areas where wooden structures are often washed away so there are anti-poaching camps inside the national park and these bridges will facilitate access to those anti-poaching camps that is what the news article says from exam point of view we have to know about the one horn rhino so this is the one horn rhino this is something like a unicorn right this is the closest thing that we have to unicorn and this Indian one horn rhino is the largest of the rhino species. There are other rhinos like Sumatran rhino, Java rhino. In comparison to all these rhinos, Indian one horn rhino is the largest of the rhino species. And what one point in time it occupied the entire northern part of the Indian subcontinent. It covered entire North India. But now it is restricted to Nepal and northeastern India and there are as many as 4000 rhinos. Earlier these rhinos were considered as agricultural pests or they were hunted for sport during the British period. So that led to the reduction in range of these rhinos and at present they are found in northeastern India and the Terra grasslands of Nepal and these rhinos are grazing animals. They eat leaves, branches of shrubs or trees, fruits and even aquatic plants and generally rhinos are solitary and male rhinos have loosely defined home ranges. If we take a tiger, they have a very strong territorial instinct but for rhinos the home range is not very strict. It is loosely defined and as per the IUCN, International Union for Conservation of Nature, IUCN status, it has vulnerable status and it is a Schedule 1 animal in the Wildlife Protection Act. And this rhino is generally hunted for the horn. Okay, so this horn to give you some extra in information, it is not actually a horn, it is a pseudo horn. Pseudo horn. And this horn is composed of hair actually. Okay, so like um, cows have horns, right? These horns are not like those horns, these are composed of hair. Alright, so moving on to the next article. This article is very very important for the upcoming mains. So it talks about the raising eminence of China in the Middle East region or the West Asia region. 
so what does it mean for india what does it mean for geopolitics that has been discussed in this wonderful article and if you have time i request you to read this article in its entirety to gain knowledge nevertheless i will provide you with a summary i'll explain what is the content of this article firstly before jumping into the article we have to know who are all the members of the gulf cooperation council okay the first member is saudi arabia then we have kuwait then we have the island country of bahrain then we have qatar we have uae and we have oman so there are six member countries of gcc and the member countries of gcc were asked in prelims 2016 okay so it is very important remember that yemen is not a part of gcc jordan is not a part of gcc iraq is not a part of gcc iran is obviously not a part of gcc only the countries in the gulf region that is the arabian peninsula they are the members of gcc that is the gulf cooperation council now we have understood this then we will jump into the analysis so why this article has come in newspaper in the first place because china brokered a peace deal between saudi arabia and iran saudi arabia it is a country which is predominantly composed of sunni muslims and iran it is composed predominantly of shia muslims and these two countries are considered to be arch nemesis they were rivals and china brokered a peace deal between these two countries and it will lead to resumption of diplomatic relations between them and the embassies of these countries will be opened mutually in each other's territory within two months so there is a concrete timeline also is given which means that this is a very important milestone in world history itself okay so how does iran view this before that we have to understand where is iran standing if we see in the map so here we have iran so iran in 2015 they were trying to enrich uranium so uranium is a nuclear fuel and if you are enriching the uranium to a higher proportion so if you are enriching almost 1 to 2 percent then it is used in nuclear power plants and if you are enriching beyond this beyond this 2% mark then it is for weapons so there were allegations that iran was enriching uranium beyond the permissible limit and as a result us placed sanctions on iran and us brought about this plan called as jcpoa that is joint comprehensive plan of action jcpoa us brought about this plan for iran by this plan what will happen is iran will stop or close down their enrichment facilities and for enriching this uranium you need certain equipment called a centrifuge so as per this jcpoa plan iran has to decommission these centrifuges and iran has to open up its nuclear facilities for inspection that was what was said in this jcpoa and iran considered it as a humiliation from the west and this jcpoa was brokered by the p5 countries plus 1 that is germany p5 countries are the permanent members of un security council which are us uk France, China, and Russia plus Germany. 
they instituted this jcpoa and heavy sanctions were imposed on iran and at that time iran was crippling in its economy so this is the background for this uh, jcpoa now we will understand this resumption of diplomatic relation between saudi arabia and iran and how does iran view this so it is seeing this particular deal as a failure of us's effort to isolate iran and it considers this as a strengthening of alliance between islamic countries and it considers this as a success against israel it this were all these points they were all mentioned by iranis newspapers so what they said is that the this particular agreement it indicates failure of israeli efforts against this agreements israel also is a arch nemesis of both saudi arabia and iran historically now the situation is changing but iran considered this as a failure of us as well as israel and iran also considers this particular deal as failure of us effort to show the iranian public that it has no choice but to agree to a jcpoa iran agreed to jcpoa because heavy sanctions were placed on iran but now saudi arabia is going to resume its relations with iran and china facilitated this so obviously these countries are willing to engage with iran so iran is seeing this as a success so they need not uh, be subjected to plans like jcpoa and iran considers this as beijing successful entry in the west asian rela relations and it considers this as failure of dreams of regime change this is hinting at us us typically does this for example in libya it deposed the gaddafi government and it brought about a new government right so in these kind of west asian countries and in the middle east and north africa region there is this general fear of regime change so iran views this as a setback to us because iran is gaining legitimacy in the eyes of both saudi arabia which is a rival and also china so iran is very much happy about this and it also considers this particular deal as failure of israel so to this deal what were the reactions of americans and the israelis so in us the first reaction was of surprise and it understood that there is a change in terms of reference in international diplomacy usually these kind of mediations they are carried out by countries like us uk the first world countries the so called first world countries and china's venture into this kind of mediation it made us to understand in global diplomacy the terms of reference are changing and israel also saw this as a blow to the effort to isolate iran so iran and israel are also arch enemies and israel sees this as undermining of effort to isolate iran now that iran and saudi are coming close there is no way that iran can be isolated in the region which israel wanted so here i am verbatim lifting a comment from the article china brought saudi arabia together with iran at a time when israel had hoped that the united states would bring it together with saudi arabia israel wanted isolation of iran israel is technologically advanced similarly saudi arabia is also financially and technologically advanced so israel wanted proximity with saudi arabia they were looking forward to israel saudi arabia unity wherein what happened in reality was saudi and iran coming together 
and israel also sees this as a negative impact on their country's national interest and if we take this comment that was done by henry kissinger he is almost 99 years old now he is a veteran in us politics and he was the former us secretary of state he said that i see it as a substantial change in the strategic situation in the middle east the saudis are now balancing their security by playing off the us against china so he sees that this is a clever maneuver by saudis wherein they are instead of saudi becoming a pawn of us it is actually making use of us china competition to advance its own interest that is what is the commentary provided by henry kissinger and if we see in the gulf region china is gaining why are we saying that the global times which is a newspaper which is a mouthpiece of the communist party of china they have quoted that china's diplomacy as a major power is just getting started and they treat this iran saudi brokerage deal as the first step in this moreover chinese president xi jinping he visited saudi arabia in december 2022 and he attended the first china arab state summit and he also attended the china gcc summit and he also stressed that china and gcc that is the gulf cooperation council they should be partners for common security it didn't stop with words they also came up with a concrete action plan from 2023 to 2027 and there was a strategic partnership agreement also that was signed and within that there were specific agreements and mous also so this shows that china arab states relation is becoming more and more concrete so the raising preeminence of china in the gulf region what does it hold for india this is where we come to exams point of view if they are going to ask you a mains question they may ask about under the context of raising preeminence of china in the west asia region what should be india's reaction something like that they might ask so you have to pay attention to this slide what does this mean for india so india has always had historical linkages with the west asia region and it is a extended neighborhood extended neighborhood the west asia region is a extended neighborhood for india and it is also very important for india in terms of security parameters in terms of the presence of organizations like ics khorasan etc in these regions moreover the west asia region is a source for hydrocarbon imports that is petroleum and gas and lot of investments are coming into india from countries like saudi arabia and uae apart from that india is doing huge manpower exports that is there is a very big diaspora indian diaspora in west asia so in this context west asia is very important for india so far what has been india's policy with respect to west asia it is avoidance in bilateral disputes india has been traditionally focusing on bilateral relations and it didn't go into the disputes but this place is now taken up by china which doesn't have a very natural relationship with the gulf countries so what should be the way forward so india should not view this as view this region to be in competition with china we should not view west asia in the context of china we have a larger presence there we have a niche there so that is the first thing that needs to be done and it should not become a surrogate for powers like us and israel who got outplayed in this deal so india should be conscious of its position and it should not become a proxy for these states so 
India should be cognizant of the uh, rise of China in the West Asia region and at the same time strengthen its relations with West Asian powers and not view itself merely as a competition for China and not get played by bigger powers and powerful states like US and Israel. So this is very important. There is a very big possibility that this might be asked in the upcoming means. Next, next article is about tiger conservation. Why is this in news? Because the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972 and Project Tiger, they came into force 50 years before. So, the completion of 50 years of these projects, it is very, very important for both prelims as well as means. Two, three days before I have dealt in detail about project tiger kindly view those videos also now we will be seeing this particular project tiger from means perspective there might be a question in your gs3 evaluate the success of project tiger 50 years since inception given the context of 3000 tigers in the wild in india such questions can be asked so you have to pay very good attention to this article now we will move into the analysis part as i said earlier 50 years since the wildlife protection act of 1972 and 50 years since project tiger started project tiger is basically to stop the dwindling of tiger population it is to conserve tiger population and how was tiger population conserved? By conserving the habitat as well as prey population. These words are there in the mission statement of project tiger itself. It might be asked in prelims. Now we will go into the analysis part. What are the problems in project tiger? The first problem is loss of diversity and uh, based on the latest tiger census, we are seeing that in states like Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, Eastern Ghats and from Northeastern Forest, basically the Eastern region of India, the tiger population is actually declining. There is Baksa Tiger Reserve, Baksa Tiger Reserve and this tiger reserve is in west bengal there are almost zero tigers in this baksa tiger reserve so we are losing tigers in the eastern part of the country so what happens is that there is a loss of genetic diversity because if we take jharkhand and chhattisgarh they have moist deciduous forest if we take eastern Ghats, they have dry deciduous forest and if we take northeastern region, they have evergreen forest. So, if we are losing tigers from these parts of the country, we are losing the genetic diversity. Tigers present in these type of ecosystems will have distinct characteristics. And if we are losing them, we are losing the genetic diversity. And if we are losing the genetic diversity, it affects the long term population viability and natural recovery. Why? Because if there is loss of genetic diversity, the population will be subject to more and more diseases. That is why loss of genetic diversity affects long term population viability. So generally what the government does is that if the tiger population dwindles in other regions, they will relocate tiger from central India from tiger reserve like Panna tiger reserve, Kana tiger reserve, from there they will relocate tigers to the areas where the tiger population is reducing. So what this leads to is that it will homogenize the tiger genetic structure across the country. And in this regard, if we are doing future reintroductions, it must be well planned so that as much genetic diversity as possible is maintained. So, if we are relocating tigers to eastern India, 
we should make sure that we are relocating from a state that is also present in eastern india so these tigers will be more adapted to eastern india instead of relocating a tiger from central india otherwise all the tigers will have similar genetic makeup and we will lose the diversity this is the first problem second problem is problems with prey population as we said earlier to increase the prey population generally what the government has done is that they will manipulate the ecosystem so that there is a high density of prey species so what happens is that as a result of this there is a cheetalification of tiger reserves cheetal is a deer species common spotted deer is called as cheetal so this cheetal it uh, thrives in a ecotone region what what is ecotone ecotone is a transition region so particularly particularly this uh, cheetal it thri thrives in transition area between forest and grasslands so because of manipulation of ecosystem in the tiger reserves generally it is observed that there is a cheetalification of tiger reserve and for example if we take kanha tiger reserve because of cheetalification there was a decline in the population of barasinga these are another species of deer because of this cheetalification barasinga population declined so this is also a problem that is observed in tiger reserves and the third problem is that of water in dry seasons uh, the forest department they provide water in these type of uh, semi arid arid areas so this leads to reduction in natural climate driven variations in the wildlife population because if there is less water the wildlife will also adapt to that instead if the forest department is artificially providing these ecosystems with water they won't have the wildlife population won't have the adaptability so that is also impacting the um, strength or rather the um, robustness of the tiger species and also there is another problem with respect to the governance structure at present we have a lot of protected areas and conservation takes place within these protected areas so this has led to sarkar complex which means it has become top down in nature so there is no policy framework which incentivizes ordinary citizens either for tiger for or for any other species there is no way for common people to participate in conservation so what has happened is that conservation is restricted to protected areas it hasn't moved beyond the protected areas in countries like us if we see the natural areas the forest areas are owned by individual communities farmers ranchers corporates charities and government and they will manage the forest as per their priorities so this has led to evolution of multiple conservation models in countries like us but in india because there is only a top down approach there is a singular model of con conservation there is no diversity in conservation models so these are all the problems with respect to project tiger and what can be the way forward so at present we have reserve forests which are under the control of state forest department probably these reserve forests can be co managed with communities that is one solution second one is that we can restore the degraded agricultural lands which surround the protected areas so there will be better connectivity between multiple protected areas and another way forward is that there should be changes brought about in laws as well as in schemes so that local communities and ordinary citizens are allowed to meaningfully participate we can empower the panchayati raj institutions right so this will lead to holistic conservation so this is about the analysis of project tiger
नेक्स्ट आर्टिकल इज अबाउट जी सेवन मिनिस्टर्स कमिट टू वर्क फॉर कार्बन फ्री इलेक्ट्रिसिटी बाई ट्वेंटी थर्टी फाइव सो जी सेवन कंट्रीज विच आर द जी सेवन कंट्रीज आई टीच यू अर निमोनिंग सो जी सेवन कंट्रीज आर जनरली द रिच कंट्रीज सो वी विल हैव अ निमोनिंग दैट इज दे हैव गर्ल फ्रेंड एंड दे ड्रिंक जूस नाउ वी विल एक्सपैंड दिस जी फॉर Germany F for France J for Japan U for US I for Italy C for Canada and E for EU So these are all the member countries of G7 they have girlfriend and they drink juice germany france japan us italy canada and eu okay so these are all the g7 countries so what does this article say so they are committing to carbon free electricity production by 2035 and they will accelerate the phase out of coal so carbon free electricity means not using fossil fuels to produce electricity that is from renewable sources so when was this particular commitment made so basically g7 summit will happen in hiroshima in may month and now ahead of this official g7 summit there was a two day conference in sapporo in japan there they have vowed to produce carbon free electricity by 2035 and for this conference india was invited as a guest because of its presidency of g20 with respect to uh, climate change and related commitments in glasgow in 2021 it was the what happened in glasgow there was conference of parties conference of parties to un f triple c so this happened at glasgow in uk in 2021 and in that particular summit india had objected to phase out and instead it pushed for a language of phase down of coal so th that is because india and china both of these countries are significantly dependent on coal for electricity generation so we can only phase down we can reduce the usage of coal and we cannot directly phase out the usage of coal that was what india's statement in glasgow was so in this particular g7 summit uh, between the climate and energy ministers which was held in sapporo they also agreed to accelerate solar and wind energy investments so that there will be 1000 gigawatt of solar power by 2030 and 150 gigawatt of wind power so this was the if we are phasing out carbon generated electricity or in other words if we want carbon free electricity by 2035 we have to do this also we have to increase production of solar based and wind based electricity why this is being done this is being done in accordance to the ipcc report ipcc is the intergovernmental panel on climate change i will explain what is ipcc in the next slide <coughs> <coughs> and ipcc according to ipcc the world community has to take measures to limit climate change under 1.5 degree celsius of pre industrial levels if we have to do this then it is essential for us to move to a carbon free electricity and produce electricity from renewable sources such as solar power and wind power so in this regard what india is taking a stand is developing countries need finance we need technology and assistance from developed countries so we neither have the money nor we have the finances to completely phase out coal 
right so we need help from developed countries which were responsible for climate change in the first place right so that is why our environment minister said that there needs to be equity and climate justice these things have to be kept in mind when such commitments are made so overall what does this article say it talks about 2035 commitment for carbon neutral electricity by the g7 countries and what they are going to do in this regard they are going to increase solar and wind based electricity that's it we are going to get from this particular article now ipcc so ipcc is the intergovernmental panel on climate change and it is a united nations body so it will assess the signs related to climate change so this assess word is very important why i'll explain first of all ipcc was formed in 1988 by world meteorological organization and unep okay so this ipcc report it is only used as a key input to climate change negotiations and who can be the members of ipcc either they are members of united nations or they are members of world meteorological organization and presently there are 195 members in ipcc so what does this assessing means so basically ipcc doesn't undergo scientific research what it does is that it will assess the scientific papers it will assess the already undergone research and it will provide a comprehensive summary about what drives climate change what will be the impact what is the future is how adaptation and mitigation can reduce those risks so basically they will analyze and assess the scientific literature and they will provide a summary basically so that is the work of ipcc that is why this assess word is very important moving on to the final article of the day so it says that legalizing same sex unions will improve mental health outcomes among the lgbtqia plus individuals so uh, research was an undertaken that is through an online survey so what it says is that there will be positive impact on mental health of L lgbtqia individuals so even if the marriage between same sex couple is legalized it might not guarantee social acceptance but what is the use of legalizing same sex marriage is that there will be a social support and secure essential rights so generally if there are husband and wife the husband can put wife as a nominee if either of the party unfortunately passes away the money goes to the spouse but in case of same sex couples that will not be possible if marriage between same sex couples is not legalized and if this marriage between same sex couples is legalized it will bring about visibility to the lived experience of queer couples so marriage is what everybody is can be in a relationship but marriage is a social and formal recognition we are coming out to the society saying that we both are married which means that it is a formal and social recognition the queer couples are looking for that formal and social recognition so it will lead to increase in self esteem it will lower the anxiety and depression and they have a right as everyone else to form a family so that is what this particular survey says now we have to see the background information so why this is in news because supreme court is hearing petitions to recognize same sex marriage and the petitioners are asking for recognition of same sex marriage through 1954 special marriage act so this special marriage act it recognizes inter caste and inter faith couples and the petitioners want the recognition of same sex couple marriage under the special marriage act so what is the special marriage act it is a civil form of marriage civil form of marriage matlab it will 
have bearing on the state the state is recognizing this particular marriage those couple who cannot marry under their personal laws that is christian personal law muslim personal law or hindu marriage act those people who cannot marry under their personal law they will undergo a civil form of marriage which is recognized by the state and these marriages are recognized through the special marriage act so what do the petitioners say so they are saying that if same sex marriage is not recognized then it amounts to discrimination and it struck at the root of dignity and self fulfillment because living is not mere existence they must be able to live a happy life realize their potential live with dignity right so if marriage between same sex couples are recognized then the queer couples would be able to live with dignity that is what the petitioners say so why this has come up because in 2018 section 377 was decriminalized what is this section 377 it is the section of indian penal code that criminalizes homosexuality all right so after the privacy judgment in 2017 it was said that sexual orientation is an attribute of privacy once this privacy judgment came into existence it provided the necessary ground for decriminalization of section 377 which says that consensual adult gay sex is not a crime and this is the navteej singh johar case under this this judgment was delivered so if uh consensual gay sex is criminalized then it is against article 14 equality and article 21 right to life or uh, and liberty and life with dignity so if a uh, consensual gay sex is criminalized then it goes against article 14 and article 21 that was the reasoning provided by the supreme court in the navteej singh johar case and as a result consensual adult gay sex was decriminalized but with respect to sex with minors non consensual sexual acts and bestiality section 377 still remains in force only the aspect of section 377 which criminalized homosexuality was removed by the supreme court that's it for the discussion we will see some previous year questions Which one of the following groups of plants was domesticated in the new world and introduced into the old world new world means the americas that is it can be north america central america or south america the entire americas they are called as new world and old world is europe asia and africa so which of the plants came from new world to the old world option a tobacco cocoa and rubber b tobacco cotton and rubber c cotton coffee and sugar cane d rubber coffee and wheat so here we have cotton we have evidence of cotton right from indus valley civilization so they were not introduced from new world so we can eliminate these two options now we have rubber coffee and wheat wheat was there in it was there as a staple diet right from neolithic age so the answer is a tobacco cocoa and rubber they were introduced from the new world into the old world next question consider the following statements today we saw an article about one horn rhino so we have this question here One Asiatic lion is naturally found in India only. Two double humped camel is naturally found in India only. Three one horned rhinoceros is naturally found in India only. So this is wrong. Why? Because we already saw that one horned rhino is found in Nepal as well. So we can eliminate these two. Now we are left with A and B. We know that Asiatic lion is naturally found in India only. Double humped camel is naturally found in India only. This is wrong because 
डबल हम्प्ड कैमल इज फाउंड इन सेंट्रल एशिया एज वेल सो आंसर इज ए वन ओनली नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन फेमस प्लेस वी हैव टू मैच इट पंडरपुर चंद्रभागा तिरचिरापल्ली कावेरी हम्पी मलप्रभा पंडरपुर इज इन महाराष्ट्र यस इट इज लोकेटेड ऑन द रिवर चंद्रभागा then tiruchirappalli which is trichy it's it is located in tamil nadu and it is in the banks of kaveri hampi it is in karnataka which was the capital of the vijayanagar empire it is not on the banks of malaprabha it is on the banks of tungabhadra so answer is a 1 and 2 only that's it for today's discussion follow us on all the social media channels This is Indumathi signing off all the best have a good day